Assalamu alaikum, you're watching Views and News and I'm Faisal Rahman live from our Islamabad studios. Today we'll be talking about uh, uh, the great Hurriyat leader Sayyid Ali Gilani Saab. He is no more now, he passed away yesterday. And uh, I think the entire uh, Kashmiri community along with Pakistanis and all those even who are living abroad, uh, they're all mourning. Because this was one man who really worked hard all his life and for one cause and that was about the freedom of Kashmir. So, he is no more today, but when I saw his body, it was wrapped in the Pakistani flag. And I think this is exactly ab about the character of this man. But before um, uh, we uh, introduce you to our uh, panelists, let me quickly read out the main uh, topics of discussion in our program. It says the Prime Minister of Pakistan, Imran Khan Saab, says that he is deeply saddened to learn of the passing of Kashmiri freedom fighter, uh, Sayyid Ali Gilani, who struggled all his life for his people and their right to self-determination. He suffered incarceration and torture by the occupying Indian state, but remained resolute. Prime Minister further stated that we in Pakistan salute his courageous struggle and remember his words. Hum Pakistani hai aur Pakistan hamara hai. The Pakistan flag will fly at half past and we will observe a day of official mourning. And today, the flags all over Pakistan, they were half past. Air Chief Marshal Zaheer Ahmed Babar Sidhu, Chief of the Air Staff Pakistan Air Force, expresses his heartfelt condolences on the sad demise of senior Hurriyat leader Sayyid Ali Gilani Saab. And the DGISPR of Air Force has stated this. And the DGISPR, Pakistan Army, further said that uh, General Kamar uh, Javed Bajwa, the Chief of Army Staff, expresses deepest grief on the sad demise of Sayyid Ali Shah Gilani Saab, icon of Kashmir Freedom Movement. His lifelong sacrifices and ceaseless struggle symbolizes indomitable resolve of Kashmiris against the Indian occupation. The DGISPR further stated that his dream and his mission will live on until people of Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir win their right of self-determination. So these were the condolences messages by the air chief, by the army chief, and also by the prime minister of Pakistan, uh, Imran Khan Saab. Now to talk about this, let me quickly introduce you to our uh, panelists. We have with us in our studio, on my right is Air Commodore retired Basit Raza Saab, senior analyst. Thank you so much, Basar, for your time. And we also have with us Iltaf Hussain Vani Saab. Again, needs no introduction. is a serious, senior Kashmiri leader. Vani Saab, pleasure to have you in the show, sir. Thank you. And we'll also be talking to Mohammed Ziauddin Saab, again, a senior journalist, after 8.30. But uh, before we start, let me quickly, sir, put this um, point that uh, Sayyid Ali Gilani, I think, senior most Hurriyat leader, sir, a very pleasant personality, a very calm person. So he was under the house arrest for the last almost 12, 12 13 12 years, years, if I'm not wrong. And so this man has been tortured. This man has been, you know, whatever sort of a misery a human can go through, he's gone through that. But still, sir, he was wrapped in the Pakistani flag and he always talked about the struggle for Kashmir, always supported the Kashmir cause, always was the first person to stand right and um, always stood by the Kashmiri people for the right to self-determination, sir. He's no more today. Your take, sir. Uh, Faisal, there are very few times when I find my, myself at a loss of words. And today is such occasion. What are words but a vehicle to convey your sentiments? And how to pay tribute to this great man who was larger than life, who symbolized, who was the epitome of Kashmiri struggle for all these long years under duress, under all that turmoil and trouble and hardships and brutalities and uh, what not you can think of. Uh, Sayyid Ali Gilani Saab was a soldier who died in his boots. He was the flag bearer of Kashmiri's struggle for freedom. And I salute him not only as a Kashmiri leader, I salute him as a Pakistani. And his words, they resound in my ears. Hum Pakistani hain. Pakistan hamara hai. So this is what his association and affiliation and belonging to Pakistan. The attachment. There are many people who say that Kashmir banega Pakistan. But he was the man who declared that Kashmir was never anything but Pakistan. 
it has always been Pakistan, it will always remain Pakistan. Whatever atrocities the Indians can commit, let them do it. But one day will come, he never lost that faith in his objective and his dream for a free, independent Kashmir who is part of Pakistan out of their own free will. Whenever they are given that their basic inalienable right, right of self-determination. And the world will see. So uh, uh, again, when I was looking and groping for words, I can only uh, quote one couplet from Faiz, if you allow me this. Jo ruke to kohe gira se hum, jo chale to jaan se guzar gaye. Rahe yaar hum ne qadam qadam tujhe yaadgar bana diya. So he gave his life for a cause and in giving his life, he achieved eternity. And his name would always be synonymous with the Kashmiri struggle for freedom. And inshallah, that day will come when Kashmir will be part of Pakistan. And we all Pakistanis will pay our homage to this great man who has laid his life. You mentioned that he, uh, he was in for last 12 years he was under house arrest and you know for last 40 years he didn't have a passport and why didn't he have a passport because you have to film a form, form in which you declare your nationality and he was he didn't want to write Indian national because he did not believe that India it's part of India so that is what his level of commitment and his uh, belief, his faith was. And inshallah, I am hopeful that his faith, his sacrifice, and he spawned, I mean, the mm. freedom struggle, the flame of freedom struggle in Kashmir is burning at full, full glow. And you know, its light is spreading all over. There are some people who are blinded by their economic realities and don't, they don't see that, that burning flame. But soon, its heat and its light will encompass everything and even those who are blinded by their economic interest will see that this just struggle will one day come and reach its uh, ultimate course, its natural course, its legitimate course and that is free and Kashmir which is part of Pakistan out of the free will of Kashmiris, inshallah. Absolutely. Your take, sir. See, uh, first of all, I would like to thank the government of Pakistan, the people of Pakistan, and the entire people around the globe who today sympathized with the people of Jammu and Kashmir and expressed their condolences with the people of Jammu and Kashmir at the demise of their friend, their philosopher, their guide, their leader. He was not simply a political leader. He was a guide. He was uh, an ideology. Uh, and people of Jammu and Kashmir are heartbroken. They feel, they will feel the absence of Gilani, but at the same time, the way he has shown the resilience over the past 70 years of his political career, that is a, a light of beacon for the people of Kashmir, for the younger generations. His speech, uh, his, uh, they will echo in the minds and years of our future generations and generations to come. Uh, because the way he led the freedom struggle, struggle mm -hmm. uh, he never compromised on his principles. He was a very humble person, but then at the same time, when it comes to compromise on the principles, he will never compromise on his principles. That's what for which he paid the price for whole of his life, as we already discussed. Uh, Barry have you ever had a chance to meet him? Yeah, I have, been, I have been meeting him. So Gilani what kind Saab. of a person? I mean, let's talk about his personality. Let's As talk if about you his Saab, He was a simple person, mm -hmm. but a very delicious person. When you meet him, mm -hmm. he will greet you with open arms, mm -hmm. and you will very not find market. that you are uh, you, uh, warm arms, arms, and uh, you will find a fatherly figure in him. Mm -hmm. uh, he will console you. He will give you tips about the life and all that. 
it was, uh, that's why uh, the younger generation of Kashmir that is uh, out of the, he became a huge ideologue for the people of Kashmir. That was because of his connectivity with the people, the way he addressed the people, the way he talked to the people, the way he, equally he was good with the uh, younger generation, with the children, and as well as for the elders. He had uh, all these characters in his uh, personality. He, he has a charismatic personality in that way. And uh, you know, he, he was a uh, orator of, par excellence. There is no uh, comparison uh, to his uh, style of uh, speech. He would start with a very slow pace and gradually his voice will increase and increase and then you will find the, lo uh, the loins roar in that voice. So uh, the way he has led it, uh, this has enriched in the future generations of Kashmir. Today uh, we also are very saddened at the way the Indian government, the Indian police, this, uh, the, the brutal way they snatched the body of uh, Sayyid Ali Shah Gilani from his family, they misbehaved with the family, and they then buried the uh, body in a nearby uh, graveyard, not allowing the people of Kashmir to pay a farewell to, the, to their great leader, the, the, which he deserved. A whole curfew was imposed, a blanket curfew in the whole of the mm -hmm. state, and uh, communications were what shut about down. Funerals, sir? Funerals. There was no no funeral of that side. It was uh, by the security post. They took the uh, body, body mm -hmm. from their uh, uh, family and then uh, buried him in a near uh, nearby graveyard. Uh, some few that people. people should gather for the burial because that would yeah. be a mass. Oh, that gathering, that huh? is why they, the people the Indians were so afraid of Gilani. Even after his death, they do not allow his funeral to be conducted. Mm -hmm. That is the way. Uh, the Gilani lived in the hearts of the people of Kashmir. Mm -hmm. That is the fear. India has having 900,000 troops on the ground. Even then, they feel uh, afraid of the funeral of, be, of an uh, person who has lived in the hearts of the people of Kashmir and will live forever. I'll tell you today, the way they denied the last rights to the people of Kashmir. This is the most condemnable thing and this has never happened in the history the Indians are doing, but the Indians can take away, I have tweeted it, that they can take away the body of and the deceased leader, but they cannot take away the ideology. That ideology is there, it will remain there until the people of Kashmir achieve their cherished goal for which Gilani gave whole of his life. He sacrificed that, he remained in jails, he be a torture for that, and he had no uh, family life for that purpose, and he was uh, put under house arrest. And you must remember, in 2015, the government of India declared that his home as a prison, sub -jail, sub -jail. as sub-jail, yeah. and that uh, order sure, remains sure. till date, and he was not allowed to come out in a way we can call it was a murder in custody. He was in the custody of Indians. It was a murder in custody uh, by the Indians. But our martyr leader, he remains in the... Uh, hearts and minds of the people of Kashmir and people of Kashmir through social media, through all their activities have expressed their, uh, dismiss, uh, demise, uh, their dismay, the way the Indian government has tackled it, but it is not the first time the Indians did it with the uh, Ashraf Sarai, Shahid Ashraf Sarai earlier and all with those who were killed during the last two years in fake encounters mm. and taken away and their burials were not held anywhere and they were buried far away from their uh, homes and their families did not know where their loved ones are. Don't you think, so, sir, this case could be taken uh, up uh, and, you know, one should talk to the Human Rights Commission? Human and Rights and Commission, one always I, I tell you, the, uh, the special reporter on right to life, he has already issued a statement in the last uh, uh, UN Human Rights Council uh, session that the last rights of a person is his last fundamental right. It cannot be denied. So you cannot and that deny has been denied. And that has been denied, not only in this Gilani Saab's case, earlier in Sarai Saab's case and so many other all other cases. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Indian government for the last two years had adopted this method of that they say by this way they can take away the ideology from the people, they can away the secrets from the people, but that's not happening in, in North Kashmir. We are heartbroken, but we pay salute to the resilience of our uh, great leader who left us, but 
he will remain in our hearts and minds and his mission will be accomplished inshallah so you wanted to add allow something. me to add please that uh, this is the level of fear and phobia in the minds of indian and this is what the victory of uh, gilani sahab is that even in his death he has instilled fear so much of fear in the indian minds that they have climbed down totally on uh, his hometown uh, hyderpura and all streets are blocked and there is heavy deployment of military over there and uh, the internet and all those means of communication are suspended and as you just mentioned that they are not even allowed the relatives uh, and the people uh, their followers are not allowed to perform the last rites this is an indian tradition maqbool but afzal guru all these people and the nail list is goes no, on no. and uh, uh, so this is what the success of the kashmiri leadership and the success of kashmiri uh, struggle is that it has stilled fear in the minds of the indians that despite all the power and the strength and the brutalities that they have committed for all these 75 uh, years or so they have still not been able to overcome their fears and whatever they are mm. doing is out of their fear fears and because of their uh, b- 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 wrong actions and missteps which they are committing and uh, may allah almighty bless the soul of uh, kilani sahab he was a great freedom fighter and but he he has left this world but the fear his fear would still remain it will keep uh, giving sleepless night to nights to the indians so uh, master sahab now gilani sahab is no more though he was in house under house arrest and he was um, under a lot of pr- problem i'm sure he wasn't well also you talk about yasin malik sahab he is also not well you talk about asian darabi for that matter i mean do you think just by putting all these leaders in the jail would stop the struggle sir certainly not in fact these becomes icons by their incarceration actually uh, uh, elevates their status people look forward to them and every day the independent and free press is focused and it raises its voice against them uh, unfortunately the indians have the power they have so much of traumatized their media that they are uh, afraid to uh, portray the real situation but the truth cannot be stopped Correct. it comes out mm. it finds its way so that is what is and this is what i am saying that you have deployed 6 million 6 uh, lakhs with soldiers over there for a very small population and yet you are not able to sort of allow a burial of a, an old frail 92 year old man what kind of power and influence you have gained by all those coercive measures that you have sort of uh, applied there all those brutalities all those uh, evil deeds that you have performed there and this is the result hmm. that a old 92 years old frail body you are afraid of that they are <laughs> And this That's is the reality. The they are. <laughs> this is what the success of Kashmir is. Now, so today, even the foreign minister also mentioned that uh, international community must take notice of this um, egregious uh, situation in um, in India, in in the Indian uh, illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir, in particular. So now, when we talk about the international community, unfortunately, uh, you know, I would say there are a lot of ifs and buts. True. They could have done a lot more, but unfortunately, sir, that hasn't been done, or it hasn't been done in the right appropriate way. I'll just come back to you on this particular point sir but we've also been joined in by uh, Muhammad Ziauddin sahab a senior uh, journalist Zia sahab assalam alaikum ji wa alaikum assalam alaikum Zia sahab wa alaikum assalam Zia sahab I hope you are good good to have you in the show also sir so since we are doing this show about uh, very sad news regarding the passing away of uh, uh, Sayyid uh, Ali Shah Gilani sahab sir senior Hurriyat leader I am sure sir you must have written so much uh, on this particular cause on his cause on on the cause of Kashmir I want uh, a couple of uh, sentences from you sir regarding this very tragic uh, day sir well been it's a very uh, you know uh, tragic uh, development for as far as Kashmir is concerned Gilani sahab although he he was 92 but he for for Kashmir he was he is always always remain 
as young as any youthful hero fighter. He's been a fighter all along. And uh, he's Because, uh, because it was Mr. Pilani himself who was the main definitely, you know, opposed to any, any other compromise on Kashmir other than Kashmir joining Pakistan. That was his rallying cry. And he, he has been uh, he has been the major, major icon, major hero of Kashmir. So his death perhaps uh, would, be, would be a great setback for Kashmiri struggle. Now, Zia Saab, uh, his proper burial and on top uh, the uh, namaz janaza wasn't held properly the way it should have been because he was, I think, one of the senior most leaders regarding that particular cause. And, uh, I mean, it was a curfew-like situation. Rather, the curfew was imposed in the, in the valley, and, uh, and then he was buried without uh, notifying anything. So your, your particular point on that and your own personal view, sir? Even in his death, Kash uh, Gilani has uh, thrown a big challenge to the Indians. And uh, uh, even in his death, he's been a kind of a threat, serious threat to the Indian occupying troops. And that was perhaps the reason why uh, they did not, the Indians did not let uh, proper burial, you know, um, uh, arrangements for for Mr. Gilani. I mean, even even he wanted to be buried in the in Sri Srinagar Matar graveyard, but that was again uh, they, they refused. The Indians refused to let the, let his family take the take the body to Srinagar. And then, and then, and then, the, actually, they actually took over the body. Yeah. They raised the body out of their family, the Filani family's hands, and uh, actually made all the arrangement. Even the janaza was not properly, you know, offered. This was, and this indicated the kind of spirit about letting it. Uh, uh, I mean, other uh, big arrangements for his burial in his uh, uh, mother's janaza. I mean, I'm, perhaps the Indians thought that if they let the janaza to be offered by the people of Kashmir, it will create a kind of a situation where they will be Exactly, sir. In, instead of, uh, you know, uh, facilitating the family. It was the other way around. Curfew was imposed. The body was practically snatched away. And we all know what happened later. But thank you so much uh, for your uh, comments, uh, Muhammad Riaudin Saab. Thank you so much once again. Now, coming back to you, sir. Again, I mean, the one major uh, aspect is about uh, the namaz janaza sir. I mean, the burial and the way the Indians behaved. It is perhaps because of fear. It is perhaps because the fear of the youth, if they get together and what can happen. So that, sir, how long will this continue? You think, forget about the Kashmiri people for the moment, sir. Let's talk about those soldiers who were deployed there, sir. They must have been going through a lot of torture as well because this is absolute inhuman activities what they're observing, or rather they're a part of that. I'm sure a lot of soldiers do not want that, but they, that particular decision is imposed on them. They're pressed, and then they're uh, you know, told to do it. So where is it leading, sir? Uh, how, more, how more people do they want to kill? How many more leaders they want to uh, get rid of? I mean, how long will this continue this way? Actually, uh, Faisal, this is very uh, adversely affecting the morale of Indian troops over there. There are uh, international reports of uh, soldiers committing suicides and soldiers killing their officers out of frustration and desperation. Absolutely. Because, you know, uh, soldiering is a difficult business. It is based on conviction. It's based on the uh, rightness of your actions. And if in your heart of your hearts, you are convinced that what you are doing is not right, then 
uh, that conviction is gone and then no soldier can stand his grounds. Well, for the time being, you have the power, you have the gun in hand and you have uh, unarmed uh, women and children and boys and young people and old people. So you can sort of uh, still uh, come out and stand guard as per the dictates of your government. But when the soldiers are not convinced, at least some of them, and I would say many of them, that their actions are incorrect. So that soldier uh, will never be satisfied. He will never perform as a true soldier. So this is as far as the morale of the uh, Indian uh, troops are concerned. And you know, these troops are not permanently deployed there. They go back to their units and fresh soldiers come. So that frustration they carry with them. And it will, like a cancer, it will spread into the uh, whole uh, military establishment uh, of the Indian Armed Forces. And I can tell you that it is very, very detrimental because armed forces thrive on their cohesiveness. Absolutely. On absolutely. their single mindedness of mm. purpose, mm. their belief in the uh, 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 correctness of their actions and their missions for which they are ready to lay their life. And if you are not convinced that you are pursuing the right mission, how can you want to lay your life? How can you want to jeopardize and risk your life for a useless cause? Nobody See in his what right mind in will do it. That is true. Yeah. Th that's a classic example. Actually, this is an eye opener for the world. And uh, uh, it's a miracle of uh, uh, 21st century. Uh, uh, it's a lesson that the era of uh, this military occupation and colonization is finally over. And uh, the, the, the dawn of freedom is right here. And let me say, I don't know, I'm, since I'm finding uh, at a loss of words to praise this great man, I again, when I think, I, I, I sort of, uh, uh, in my imagination, in my eye imagination of my eye of my imagination, I go to the dead body of uh, Ali Gilani and I see the Indian soldiers snatching it out of the hands of their near and dear ones. Can you imagine and that? And I can, I can see a smile on face of Gilani Saab and I, rem I remember the verse of Faiz again, allow me to say it in Urdu. Karo kaj jabin pe sare kafan, mera katilon ko guma na ho. So, Bani Sahib has been buried, if he has been buried by the Indian forces, uh, as the reports are, uh, away from the family, then still he has given them a knockout, knockout punch and even in his death. And Absolutely. I am sure they will keep on having sleepless nights. <laughs> Which they deserve. Him. That's right. Now, Bani Sahib, another very important, I am sure you have gone through those small clips, those videos, there are four of them uploaded in a, in a certain forum and you're also part of that. I think that was perhaps the daughter of Gilani Saab or, or some, some woman. She was crying when these soldiers were taking away, uh, they were picking up that uh, body. Yeah. And uh, she was crying and, uh, you know, I could, I said like, how helpless these people are. I mean, this is the extreme, sir, if your father or your loved one is no more. And you know, that is the most sentimental time, sir, in one's life, when you lose somebody so precious to you. And then this happens on top. Second thing, sir, is about what happened in Kabul. Sir, insurgencies or freedom fighting movements all over the world, they have gained a lot of momentum, at least morally. Are the Indians really afraid of that, sir? Because on every other forum, the Indians are crying about it. See, uh, there's two things. Indians must be, uh, they are crying on it. And there's uh, one way of is their tactical move. Uh, they want to try malign Taliban's uh, success with the freedom of Kashmir in order to this is uh, what is happening. engage Pakistan in the debate and say that Pakistan will do this and that and will go this. Uh, as uh, Commander Sub said that, these uh, moments, uh, the uh, recent developments which took place in Afghanistan, this is a moral booster for the every freedom-loving country, for every freedom-loving uh, nation who are fighting against the illegal occupation. We have seen the fall of a huge, uh, uh, the biggest power on the earth, how they left uh, in midnight 
uh, leaving all their belongings there. So the India is not that a big power. India, whatever India has been doing for last uh, so many years in Kashmir, it was blessings of that big power uh, on that. And it's uh, the way uh, we say one of the icons of one of the uh, sagas, the way a big power threw his body into the ocean and that said we have now ended all that. The India learned from that and India started doing it with the people of Kashmir, taking out the bodies and throwing them in the far flung areas from their loved ones, so, uh, thinking that now people of Kashmir will leave that freedom struggle, they will leave that thinking about the freedom. Uh, Indians have employed each and every tactics on the people of Kashmir. I will quote the words of uh, Sayyid Ali Shah Gilani, mm -hmm. uh, may his peace, uh, soul rest in peace. He said once that whatever weapon you have, O oh India, whatever weapons you have, you can employ on us. You employ, we will not budge. If you want to buy us through economic packages, we are not going to be sold. If you, uh, instead of our coal, if you leave the gold on our roads, we will not leave that because our Madhya's blood is more costlier than all of your offers, Correct. all your things. So that is, that was his straightforwardness. That was his uh, courage. That was his charisma. Mm -hmm. That has been inducted in the younger generation of people of Kashmir. That is why Indians often, uh, some uh, a few days back, Indian agency said some 60 people are missing, young people are missing. And we know the Indians will arrange the fake encounters in coming days and said these people have joined the militants. This is their tactic. This they is are what trying they do. to do it. But mm. you see, today, every year you have seen that Indians said there are 200 militants in Kashmir and at the end of the year they will say we have killed the 200 and now there are uh, mm. 200 more. Then they will come, there are 200 more. So it sees that by all employing all these forces, India has not been able to suppress the people's resistance in Kashmir. That Which resistance they will never be able that to resistance do. will continue and that will achieve its end goal. Mm -hmm. That is the right self-nation for people of Kashmir. Mm -hmm. But India will have to think on it. Will they leave Kashmir like the big powers left Kabul? Or the big powers have to leave the other places, or India has to leave the Kashmir No on matter rebel. how big your army is, you cannot kill, you can kill a person, sir. You cannot kill the will of a person. You cannot kill the determination. determination you cannot kill. eliminate the ideology behind it, sir. Yeah, they, they, they tried everything to make people of Kashmir homeless, jobless, taking their land and all these things. The way they manipulated things for the last two years, they tried to the apple get the orchard, people sir, they were from, full of apples India, and they were from cut the mainland down, India. They should buy lands in hmm. Kashmir and all that. But mind it, Faisal, till date, they did issue them the state subjects. They did issue them the domiciles to the non-state subjects. But none of them dare to come to the Kashmir Valley till date. So Indians will have to think. The people in India, they, those people who believe in human rights, who believe in uh, democracy, who believe in uh, all international obligations of theirs, or who believe in humanity, they will have to think what they have to do. Are they going with this RSS fascist regime? Are they going with this? Absolutely. They will have to meet the end they are designed to meet. So this, at this time, as we were talking about the Indian military and other things, each and every segment of the Indian government organ is being if, uh, infected by this RSS ideology. And that ideology itself is going to... It's a uh, self-destructive self kind of uh, for, <laughs> for, 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 for virus or something. Absolutely, Absolutely. So since I'm totally running out of time, but Glani's... Saab, I, I totally agree with you, was, uh, was a great man, sir. We don't end up seeing such personalities for centuries. And I think he really deserves a great tribute. And I think Pakistan government has done, uh, but a lot more needs to be done, sir. But thank you very much, gentlemen, uh, for your uh, presence. But I'll just say one thing, that this man, uh, I mean, whenever we'll remember him, whenever somebody's going to write about him, somebody's going to you know, give a reference about him, his name will always be written in golden words. He was not only a human being, he was just a character of a very high caliber. And I think such people are really, really needed. Such characters, such personalities are needed in order to make sure that the illegally Indian occupied Jammu and Kashmir should be liberated. We all have the right 
to self-determination. This is what his will was and inshallah one day, uh, obviously it is not possible in his life, but uh, his loved ones will see that day. I'll see you inshallah tomorrow. Till then you take good care. Khuda Hafiz.